Hello and welcome to our Yoga Hero Teachers podcast. This podcast has been designed to help yoga teachers teach with passion, avoid burnout and earn a fair living. Setting up your own yoga classes can be completely daunting. Where on earth do you start? What if people don't come? What if you invest in yoga mats and rent a space and tumbleweed? We've all been there. However, there are some simple and sensible steps you can take to set up your own yoga classes without taking huge risks and without giving yourself absolutely loads of work to do. So here's where we're going in this podcast episode. We'll start off with the most important thing to consider. Who are the classes for? Who are you going to teach and what are you going to teach? This needs some serious consideration, so we'll run through some useful questions to challenge your thinking here and make sure that it's solid. Then we'll have a think about the space that you'll hold your classes in. If you already have a space in mind, this might be a useful recap of what to look for and what to ask. Then we'll look at how to price your classes, including whether to teach week in, week out for the foreseeable future or whether to book in blocks, how to promote the classes and what to do if numbers are low. And lastly, we'll look at logistics of last minute cover and cover for holidays and how to look after yourself whilst committing to teaching these classes. So lots to discuss. (laughs) So let's get going. Who are the classes for and what will you teach? I know, I know, this sounds really simple. Well, I'm going to teach yoga to the people that come to the class. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But think about it. The name, the write-up, the location, the price of your classes will dictate who comes, will dictate who shows interest and who immediately thinks, "Mm, these classes aren't for me. Have a think. What attracted you to yoga when you first started practicing? Maybe you love a challenge and you were attracted to the name Power Flow, but this wouldn't have attracted someone who's looking to relax, even though the class may have had some relaxation elements to it. This comes down to deeply and confidently knowing who you are as a yoga teacher and who you want to teach. If you're dedicated to helping runners avoid injury, there's really no point in you setting up a class for office workers. If you're passionate about helping people relax, there's no use you using your precious resources of time, energy and mental bandwidth teaching a power flow class to loud dance music. Not that there is anything wrong or right or better or worse than any of these things. It just boils down to this. Who are you and who do you want to teach? If you need help with this, (laughs) look no further. Put your name down for our masterclass how to create your yoga brand, because that is exactly what we'll be working through together. The link to sign up is in the show notes and it's completely free. Where to teach your classes? Renting a space for yoga classes was easily my biggest challenge for the first three or four years of Yoga Hero before creating a permanent studio space. I'd go and view somewhere, I'd think it was perfect, I'd get there and teach the class and there'd be like a band rehearsal next door or the roof leaked in the rain or the heating didn't work or there was one toilet that doubled as a changing room and so 10 people would be late starting the class because they'd been waiting in the queue. Episode 8, Renting a Space for Yoga covers mitigating all of these mistakes and more. It's linked to in the show notes, so do have a listen after this. It'll hopefully save you a lot of the headaches that I experienced. It's worth mentioning here that a space might be completely beautiful, but not right for your offering. Listen to your gut, listen to your intuition here. If you feel like the space won't work for the yogis you have in mind, don't do it. Keep looking. Lastly, in terms of where to teach, don't be shy in negotiating good terms for yourself. 
if you get a fair deal renting the space, it really takes the pressure off the whole of the rest of the process. Some places will want a set rate, like a certain amount per hour. So maybe you could negotiate this down. Maybe you could offer someone who works there a free space in your classes in return for a discount. Some places will want a percentage of your takings. So then it's in their interest that more people come. So find out how they will help you promote your sessions and see if you can push them to do a bit more. Be very sensible about signing up to anything long term before you have any idea of who and how many people will come. See if you can negotiate something like a six week trial to start off with. It's amazing how much a bit of peace of mind can help you put your focus where you really need it rather than being distracted by worry. How to price your classes. This is easily one of the questions I'm asked the most by yoga teachers and it's tough. It's so tough. We have to walk that thin, thin line between making yoga accessible for everyone, but not underselling ourselves. Episode one is pricing strategies for your yoga classes. Definitely give that a listen. It's a really, really useful guide. Once you've set your pricing, there's a few things that you can do to help increase attendance. An early bird price. Use an early bird price to encourage people to sign up earlier rather than later by offering a discounted early bird price with a strict deadline date. Bring a friend. If two friends book together, then they get 10% off the overall price, for example. Block booking. Rather than booking the one class, encourage people to book a block of, say, five or ten Bear this in mind when thinking about whether to teach week in, week out or in blocks, which we'll talk about later on. What to do if numbers are low. When you're in the initial stages of setting up your own yoga classes, you need to take some time to work out exactly how many people you need to break even to cover your costs. Don't forget to include paying yourself for your time, as well as paying for things like transport, parking, equipment, the cost of the room hire, etc. And you need to know how many people you're aiming for. What's the ideal number that you would get to really make the sessions work? If you're approaching the start date of your classes and your numbers are lower than your break-even point, here's a few things that you can do. Investigate why. If people have inquired about your classes but not booked on, you could email them and phone them and really politely ask why they haven't booked on. Yes, they might have forgotten and they might book with you there and then, which would be great. But approach this more as a learning exercise. If the class wasn't the right price, day, time, location, this all feeds into setting up your own classes at a different time or place in the future. So it's really, really valuable insight. Check the insights. First of all, how have you been promoting your classes? If it's on social media, check the statistics and insights to see how many people have seen and interacted with what you've put out there. I'm constantly amazed by how much repeating a message actually improves the results. You'd think repeating things over and over would get on people's nerves, but it seems to do the opposite. Think how many times you've seen the same advert on TV or the same billboard you've driven past. It actually serves to reinforce the message that the company is trying to tell you. So let's take the same approach. If you've done one or two posts and they've not really taken off, commit to telling people about your classes, but from different angles and don't be shy. Episode 18, create your social media strategy will really, really help you here. And of course, it's linked to in the show notes. Consider other methods of communication and advertising. Without annoying anyone and without setting off any GDPR radars, (laughs) Can you call or email people that you think might be interested in your sessions? 
Is there anywhere that you could put flyers, maybe coffee shops or local businesses where your yogis hang out? My advice is honestly, don't worry about over pushing your classes. I know it's so hard. Selling yourself just feels cheesy and pushy and awful. But remember, what you're offering could really improve someone's life. So tell them about it. Week in, week out, or blocks? Honestly, there's no right answer here other than what will work best for you and what will work best for your yogis. There's a consistency to week in, week out that can really, really work for people. But teaching in blocks can give you a couple of weeks off for some R&R. But that break between blocks also serves as a break for your yogis and sometimes they don't get back into the rhythm of coming back as quickly as you would hope. If you decide to teach in blocks, get organised and get people booked on to the next block before the current one is finished. Make sure that they're clear on the dates and you're golden. I'd say if you're planning on teaching week in, week out, that really is what you must do. If you cancel a class, expect people to get out of the habit of coming and from experience it takes people about six weeks to get back into the rhythm of coming weekly. Now, you definitely do not want to burn out. If you're not well, then that's that. But if you can dedicate yourself weekly, your yogis are more likely to do the same. Cover. Cover is really important to consider now before you set up your classes. Work out your cover logistics. If you're unwell or on holiday or you can't make your class for any reason, what are you going to do? Is there a teacher that you know that can cover the class? If so, how will they open up? How will they check people in? How will they take payments? How will they lock up? And consider putting clear rules and guidelines in place. Can they promote their own classes? What should they say if people ask them where they teach? Do you have expectations about how your equipment is cleaned and stored? How and when will you pay them? And so on. This might sound over the top, but I have known deep, long-term friendships ruined over different expectations of what should and shouldn't happen during a cover class. It really is best to be clear. Looking after yourself. Teaching weekly is a big commitment. Each class needs planning. Well, to a point, (laughs) listen to episode 16, do I need a new sequence every week if you haven't already? Each class needs promoting, each class has its own admin, such as checking in attendees, checking who's paid, who can't make it, who's signed a disclaimer or a health questionnaire, who needs to know where to park, who are you bringing a map for, etc, etc. So ensure you're looking after yourself. This means non-negotiable downtime on the day you're teaching. Ideally, you're not doing a full day of your day job if you have one, flying to your class, teaching that, and then whizzing home to start the housework. Be mindful of how you feel about the class if you get nervous or apprehensive. Be kind to yourself and sit with it. Remember, it's just because you care. Schedule in longer periods of downtime, maybe taking a couple of days off between classes. Make sure you keep practicing and stay inspired. And above all, be mindful of your energy levels. You cannot pour from an empty cup. So that's it, lovely teachers. Setting up and teaching your own yoga classes can be an incredibly fulfilling way to teach your yoga in the way that you wish to. It's really fulfilling and empowering. Don't forget to keep your eyes peeled for the clear and confident yoga teacher course. The doors open soon. If you have a couple of minutes free, we'd be so, so grateful if you could rate and review this podcast wherever you're listening to it. And if you can share with a yoga teacher too, well, that would just be amazing. As a reminder, all links are in our show notes, which are available for you at yogahero.co.uk forward slash podcast 27. We'd love to know how you're finding these episodes and if they're useful. 
please do let us know by emailing hello at yogahero.co.uk or sending a DM to Yoga Hero Teachers on Instagram. And as always, happy, happy teaching. Bye.